Alabama. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So as we get started with our Sunday school lesson this morning on, on God in the Midst, Get Them Radio, we're going to have Sister Sandra to come and give us a song this morning. Hallelujah. She kind of camera shots off. I'm going to have to slide her over next to me here a little bit so she can sing while she on, on, on the actual video. Hallelujah. She looking at me and she giving me that right eye. <laughs> amen. Amen. Just now, just sing. Get it, get it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Good morning. Ain't no other God of Jesus. There's his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout a victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Onward to the lies before us. Soon his beauty will be home. Yes. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. Oh, yes. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We will sing and shout the victory. Thank you so much. Lady Sandra, for, for giving us that rendition of when we all get to heaven this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I told y'all I'm excited. I'm just excited this morning. Glory to God. I hope my audio is doing good. If you're on the, on the uh, 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 Facebook, just send me a note and say I can hear you loud and clear. Just, uh, just give me an, uh, 
a like or love right now. Amen, amen. Cause I had some problems with my audio, with my video on uh, uh, Friday. So I need to know if everything is coming through good. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Well, uh, let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings, Lord. We we just lift you up, give you glory, give you honor, and give you praise. It is such a marvelous and wonderful, beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done. You woke us up this morning. You clothed us in our right minds. You gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, you gave food on our table, shoes on our feet, clothes on our back, a roof over our head, Lord. You even gave us transportation to get to and fro. Lord, we thank you right now for everything that you have done. Now, Lord, we lift up your son, Jesus. Our Lord and Savior, because that's the most important thing you did in our lives. You let him down the cross by sin, but you raised him from the dead and gave him all power in heaven and earth in his hands, Lord. And now he's sitting at your right throne, the Heavenly Father, interceding on our behalf. But when you took him up, you didn't leave him, leave us by ourselves. You sent down your Holy Spirit, who's also interceding for us with moans and groans that we can't even understand. Thank you, Lord. When we don't know what to pray for, your Holy Spirit prays through. Then, Lord, your Holy Spirit is signing, sealing, and delivering us until the day of redemption. Come, Lord Jesus. Come on back and redeem us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Oh, hallelujah. We have a wonderful Sunday school lesson this morning. Our Sunday school lesson for this morning comes from Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4. So if you will, turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 4. As I said earlier, as you turn in, uh, we, are, we are in Montgomery, Alabama, and uh, we came down to see our daughter, Candace, down in Tuskegee and came on up to Montgomery to spend the night. We praise God for the blessings that he has given us uh, uh, to be able to travel, for her to be in school, for us to be able to go down and visit her and all of that. And now we're in the hotel room and we are just going to preach the word of God and teach it this morning. All right. Revelation chapter four. And I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. Uh, no, excuse me, the New International Translation. It says, after this, I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I, I first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once, at once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with some, someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne was 12 or 24 elders, or 24 other thrones, excuse me, and sitting on them were the 24 elders. They, they were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From, from the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and uh, uh, peals of thunder. In front of the, the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covering covered with eyes in front and in back. <clears throat> the first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. And the fourth was like a, a flying eagle. 
each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is sitting on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell down before him who sat on the throne and worshiped him uh, who lives forever and ever. And they laid their crowns before the throne and said, you are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That, that right there, oh my goodness, that right there excites me this morning. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Oh, hallelujah. I, oh, this lesson, this lesson, this lesson is talking about the throne in heaven and how we should worship God Almighty. That verse, that verse 11, oh my goodness. That verse 11, the elder saying verse 11, you are worthy, O oh Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Yes, yes, God is our creator and he's worthy. Oh, I got to slow down. I'm supposed to teach this morning. But he's worthy, y'all. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Oh, hallelujah. So our key concept for today's lesson is God is awesome and worthy of the praise. God is awesome and worthy of the praise. And so the, the key to this message, there's three keys to this message. God is the creator of the universe and of you. And I. God loves us. He loves you and he loves me and we ought to praise him. He loves our praise. Oh, hallelujah. God is worthy of all of the glory and the honor. And so with this, our aim for today is to deal with some lesson facts to describe John's vision in Revelation. The biblical principles that we want to to explain is that worship, worship is so important. It's so important that it's still going on in heaven right now and will go on in heaven forever and ever. And we should worship him in spirit and in truth now. Oh, hallelujah. And then our daily application. It is to find one way to enhance our approach to worship. So as we, we look at this lesson, we're going to go inside the throne room. We're going to go inside heaven and look at the throne in heaven. So as we get ready to look at it, we're going to look at it from city who's sitting on the throne, verses 1 through 3. We're going to also look at seen around the throne, verses four through seven, and then the worship before the throne. Oh, hallelujah. So as an introduction to this lesson, the royal throne of, of, of Naples is, is, is behind glass in the museum in, in, in Kanamadu. But for the palace, it is now a museum. The royal family of of, of Naples was, was massacred in 2001 and replaced by constitutional government. The throne remains a, a symbol of the monarch's once revered status. Some see a risk in, in its preservation for, for, 
for any restoration of the monarch movement in Naples would would uh, uh, likely want us to uh, want to use this throne for seating a new king. Thus, it may be considered both a national treasure and a threat to democracy at the same time. Today's lesson pictures heaven in terms of a royal throne room. The one sitting on the throne is the king of heaven and earth. The one allowed access into the throne room have a certain, uh, 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 what did they want to say, a uh, way of honoring their Lord and their proximity to Jesus Christ. John's vision of this scene is overwhelming for him. Yet, he does his best to explain what he sees what he hears, and he never talks about what he smells, but I know it smells good up in heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yet, he does his best to explain all of this and even try to put it in words. So the background of this lesson, many, 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 many people have, have, have these uh, 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 theories that exist about revelation. They, 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 their interpretation of revelation, if you will. Some believe this is prophetic of the future event, primarily those uh, at the end times where other think its presence, it presents a, a panorama of the church history. Whatever one's view is, there is some important details about revelation that should be kept in mind while studying this book. One concerns the history and setting of the book. The apostle John, he was exiled and barred to an island called Patmos. Patmos is an island in the in, in, uh, Algerian Sea and, and, and he was put there because of his unwavering loyalty to Jesus Christ. He was exiled from the church in Ephesus. And when he wrote this revelation, he talks about the first, the seven churches, and the first one was the church of Ephesus. This, this text was written around 90 to 96 AD. Now, what's remarkable about this is that the Roman Empire was threatened by a 90-some-year-old man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was 90-some years old, and he was a threat to the Roman Empire where they had to exile him and put him on the island. He must have been one heck of a preacher. <laughs> Yeah, he must have been a serious preacher to get the whole Roman Empire upset and they had to put him in exile. In addition, not only should we remember the historical facts around this book, we should remember that the book of Revelation is a narrative a story told by a narrator. Much factual history is written in narrative style. John tells what he experienced, marvelous divine visions given to him in exile by Christ. The best way to read Revelation then is as a story with various scenes in which the context is connected. Act one, act two, act three, all of them are right there together. The primary overall message of this book is that despite how intense the opposition to God's people may be, in the end, we try. In the end, evil is banished for all eternity. It's gone for all eternity. 
and today's lesson begins as already described by John himself. Revelation 1 and 10, he says, in the spirit on the Lord's day, I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then he says, he experienced visions like unto the son of man. But, but, but before receiving Jesus' message to the seven churches in chapter two and chapter three, chapter four open with this new dimension of John's experience. Oh, hallelujah. John went into the throne room. And, and, and I gotta say, before we ever, when we get in the throne room, if we're not in, a, in the spirit, if we're not in a worship mode, when we go into the throne room, oh yeah, yeah. It, it, you don't fall into worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that movie called The War Room. That movie, The War Room, it showed how you could get into your own closet and go and pray. Come up with the strategies and plans that, that God has for you and how you can execute those plans. Oh, the war room was good. But we're going into the throne room now. And I tell you, when you go into the throne room, you don't need no plans. You don't need no strategy. You just go into the throne room and just experience the presence of the most high God. Oh, hallelujah. That, that gives me chills all over my body. I got pill bumps coming up when I think about going into the presence of God Almighty. So let's look at this first scene. Let's look at this scene inside of the throne room. And they're sitting on the throne. That person who's sitting on the throne. So he says, after these things, I look and behold a door standing open in heaven. And, and the first voice which I hear, which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately, I was in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. I just love this text. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like jasper and sapphire stones in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Mm -hmm. He said after this, after he ex went through talking about the various seven churches and all of this. Now, 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 John. John the Revelator. John the Apostle. John the, the, the one that Jesus loved. After these things, he says, I look and behold a door standing open in heaven. I got to say something to you. We all have a door that is standing open in heaven. When we get down on our knees and worship him, when we lift up holy praises to him, the doors of heaven open. And when he looked inside, he said, I heard, I heard, the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me. I got to say this about what he heard. One of our problems is that many times we go into the presence of God talking too doggone much. I had to say it. Oh, Lord, uh, I need thee. 
Oh Lord, can you help me now, God? Oh Lord, all the time. Because we supposed to pray about everything, and we supposed to put uh, uh, not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication, make our requests known unto God. So yeah, help me, Jesus, help me, Lord. But then there's other times when you got to go to the doors of heaven and just start praising him and giving him thanks. And then, then, then you get so, so, so engulfed in, in your praise for God, you get so engulfed in your thankfulness to God, your gratitude that you just start moaning. And that's when you can start hearing God's voice. And you're going to know it's God's voice as compared to your own flesh or, or compared to the devil or compared to the world. You're going to know that it's God's voice because he said, my sheep hear my voice and no other would they follow. And so John heard this trumpeting voice speaking to him. And the voice said, come up. Boy, I can preach that right there. Come on up. A little higher. Come on up. He says, come up here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. God will show us revelation. Things come. He will also give us revelation about things that have happened in the past. And he'll give us revelation about things that are happening right now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 2, immediately, I was in the spirit and behold a throne sitting in heaven and, and one sat on the throne and he sat there was like a jasper and a, a, a sardis stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne in the appearance. Oh, hallelujah. He said immediately, I went into the spirit. He got engulfed. He got filled. And then he noticed a piece of furniture. Yes. And that furniture was the throne of heaven. And one was sitting on that throne. It was like Jasper, it says, and like sawdust. And, and John describes the stones of crystal clear that that, that reference like to diamonds and and in the reaction of, of everybody that, that, that seen this wonderful beauty and marvelous scene. Oh, my goodness. The sawdust, like a ruby stone. He saw it. Beautiful. The emerald and his cool green hues, he, he saw it. And then all of a sudden, he sees a rainbow. And I can, I can imagine in his mind when he saw the rainbow, he thought about the promise that God gave to Noah, that, that, that this was a sign of God's faithfulness to his word and to his promise, and that he would never destroy the earth again. By water. Oh, what a problem. The throne. The throne. And a rainbow around it. It had jasper stones and, and rubies. And, and, and it was just gorgeous. Then, after he looked at that throne, he realized who was sitting on it. It was Jesus himself. He was the one that sat on that throne. 
He was the one that, that was surrounded by all of this beauty. He was the one that was engulfed in all of this because the beauty was coming from him. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> that beauty was coming from him. It wasn't the throne. It was the one sitting on the throne. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, some folks want to come and worship the throne. But it ain't the one on the throne. I mean, it ain't the throne itself. It's the one sitting on the throne that has all of this Japan of glory. So, now let's look around that throne. The scene around the throne, verses 4 through 7. Listen to the text. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightning, thunders, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there, there was a sea of glass like crystals, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes and front and back. The, the living, first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature was like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. I got to read verse eight with this one. But I'm going to come back to just, I'm going to read verse 8a. The four living creatures, each having six wings, and were full of eyes all around and within. And they did not rest day or night. I'm going to come to back what they said in a minute. Let's look at this. There are 24 th thrones surrounding the one throne. These 24 thongs represent the Old and the New Testament. It represents all of the sons of Abraham. And then it also represents the apostles of the New Testament of Jesus Christ. 12 and 12, it represented. And these thrones, There were people sitting on it, 24 elders, 24 preachers, 24 people of God. Now, I don't know if it was literally the, the 12 sons of Abraham and, or the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ at this point. It, it does, I don't know. But it represented them. And, 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 and how I know that it represented them for sure is because later on they do something. I'm gonna come back to it. I can't get ahead of myself. <laughs> Gotta go to it now. It says they they were all clothed in white. And they all had crowns of gold on their head. See that 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 the white gone mean that they've been washed clean, they've been covered in the blood. That 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 crown on their head indicates that that they that they have been been living the life, they lived the life that was deserving of a crown when they got to heaven. Oh hallelujah. And then it says on that throne proceeded lightning and thundering and voices. Many times when we think of lightning and we think of thunder, we think of God's wrath. But but no, this is in heaven. This is just part of God's glory. Then the seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirit spirits of God. 
We already early in the third chapter talked about the seven churches and how this lampstand represented the seven churches. So that's to say to me that God's spirit is complete. We are all part of that body of believers. And there, that means that as the part of that body of believers, everybody ain't going to have church like you have church. Uh-oh, I just stepped on somebody's feet. I'll keep on going. They don't sing like we sing. Oh, I can't let it go. They don't preach like we preach. They don't teach like we teach. They don't know the Look, I can't put the same thing in my mouth that I'm supposed to put in my eye. I can't put the same medicine in my ear that's supposed to go on my hand. And in the body of Christ, there, there's a multitude of parts. And we of the universal church must accept others worshiping and praising the one and living God in their own way. Oh, somebody ought to say amen to that. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So it says, before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystals, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne, there were four creatures full of eyes in front of and in the back of, and that first living creature was like a lion, and lion represents the power and the glory of, of God. And, and, and then the second living creature was like a calf. That, that represents the work ethic and the humility of God. That third living creature had a face like a man. That means that represents the rationality and the logic and the thinking of a man. And that fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And that talks about the swiftness of God's service for us. When we need some, he comes swift like a flying eagle. Oh, hallelujah. And these four living creatures, having six wings and were full of eyes around them, they could see in front, they could see in back, they could see wherever they was going. And that is to say, God is all knowing. Oh, hallelujah. He knows the beginning from the end. Oh, hallelujah. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Come on, Facebook, get with me today. Somebody say, hallelujah. Show me that you understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Then it says, they didn't rest day or night. That's to say that God never sleeps nor slumbers. <laughs> but these four creatures, they, that day and night, they just kept saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy is he. Not one holy, not two holy, but threefold holy. He's holy, holy. They just kept yelling. They just kept screaming. So that's the scene around the throne. Now, now listen, listen now. We're going to talk about this worship. That's why I say I wanted to hold off to, 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 be, to deal with this holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. Because verse 9 says, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sat on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell down before him who sat on the throne and, and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. And cast. They took the crown 
Oh, hallelujah. Take my crown. Do it at his feet. They threw his the crown at his feet. They threw it at the throne and they said, You are worthy, oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. He's worthy. They cast their throne, they cast their crown. Aware that God alone is responsible for the reward they had received. They, 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 they divest themselves and, and all of the honor and cast it at the feet of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They worshiped him. They worshiped before the throne. What a word, y'all. What a mighty good word. That's why I know when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. We'll take our crown off of our heads. We, we'll be robed in white and we'll cast them crowns because we got the victory. Victory in Jesus. It's mine. Oh, it's mine. It's mine. Victory. Victory. I can't wait till that day. Well, I hear the Lord say, my good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things. Come on up here a little higher, and I'll make you ruler over many things. That's our word for today. And if you don't know Jesus Christ in your personal relationship, I'm sorry. It's just a story to you. And if you one of them people who have listened to the devil and he's told you, man, look, man, you come down here to hell with me, you, you, you know, um, Come on, let me show you what hell look like. And he'd be showing folks the beaches, the big sunny beaches and all the pretty girls and all the pretty men walking around on the beach. One fella trusted the devil and he believed what, he, what the devil showed him. And then when he went to hell, hell was a place of fire and brimstone. And, and he went to the devil, where, where's the beaches? Where's the white sands? Where are the beautiful blue oceans? He said, oh man, that was just an advertisement. <laughs> that wasn't the real thing. This is the real deal. Well, I'm here to tell you, this throne in heaven that God revealed to John is the real deal. Many of us have, have been there and seen that open door and looked in heaven. And we know because the word of God says so. So we ought to sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and he is to come. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor for your cre you created all things and by you will they exist and were created. We live, we move, and have our being in him. Oh, hallelujah. So now, I want to welcome you to the house of God. I want to welcome you into the family by praying the prayer of salvation with you. Please pray this prayer with me, and I promise you, you will be saved, and you will have a home up in heaven. Let us pray. Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and you truly believe it in your heart, you are saved. And one glad morning, when this old earthly body gives up the ghost, 
you'll be singing when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing it will be. It'll be howdy, howdy. Thank you, Jesus, all the time. No more dying, no more crying, no more sadness, no more tears. No more pain. No more anguish. Facebook, we love you. We'll see you next Sunday for God in the Midst Sunday School. And for those of you who want to inter uh, interact with us, we're going into overtime on the conference call where we talk about the lesson and we take prayer requests and praise reports. The number that got called is 619-639-4733. Again, the number is 619-639-4733. Amen. And if God is willing, I'll be live on Facebook again, probably on Wednesday night, uh, re-preaching what I preached on Friday night so that I could get it recorded on Facebook and on YouTube. But until then, you be blessed. And always remember to be a blessing. Praise the Lord.